Lynn is an amazing designer, author, entrepreneur, and teacher. One of her many specialties is polymer clay, and she is here to show you how to create polymer clay rattlesnake beads. Now that sounds cool. I'm delighted to welcome Linda Peterson. Hi, Linda. Hi, Tiffany, and hi, everyone. Um, yeah, when you talk about rattlesnake beads, it's kind of intriguing. But really, this is a technique that, if you're uh, familiar with polymer clay, it's really one of the staples. And it's from the Makumi Gane uh, technique. And I wanted to show this to you because it really highlights the versatility of this technique. So, Tiffany, if you will put up the slide, I believe, if you'll put up the slide of, of my book, because um, it's the Techniques book and this project is inside the book, and all the details um, will be there. So while, while she's doing that, I will adjust the camera. Because it's, it's kind of a, um, well, it's not really an intensive project, but there's a lot of little steps to it. I've kind of condensed them down to what is most important. So, but if you have a pasta machine, and even if you're a, a new person, if you're new to polymer clay, you can do this and make some really cool looking beads. So what I have here is I have all of the colors that you're going to be working with. Let me turn that around so you get a better view there. And let me adjust here real quick. Pull this out just a little bit. There you go. Okay, so I've got a white sheet. I've got a chocolate brown, a tan, and this is called peppermint if you're using uh, Fimo Soft, but it's a turquoise color. And these are all run through the pasta machine on a very thin setting. It's not the thinnest setting. It's the second or third thinnest setting on the pasta machine. And what you're going to do, Makumigani, is just stacked clay. So what we do is we stack um, different colors of clay together, and we create a sandwich. The recipe for this is in the book. So you create something that looks like this. You run it back through the pasta machine on a thicker setting, so because this is thicker now. And what it, what it will do is it will elongate. And it looks like this one here. Let me pull this one over. So each time that you pass it through the pasta machine, it gets thinner and it gets longer. But you can still see here, let me pull it up right here it still maintains the layers. So we're not uh, marbleizing, we're not mixing colors together. And what you're going to do now is you're going to take your clay blade and you're just going to cut this in half and you're going to stack it again. And what you want is several layers of very, very thin, come on camera, Let's see if I can get this to focus, there we go, very, very thin strips of color like this and what we're going to do is we're going to alter the way these lay inside the sheet of clay and I kind of think of this like um, when we used to make um, oh those doodle colors or those sketch colors were used to draw on with the crayon and then you'd cover it with black paint and then you scratch it off and you reveal a pattern it's kind of what we're doing now so what I've done is well, let's take this one back we have our thin sheet here. Now I have a piece of metal mesh. This is a copper mesh. It doesn't really matter that it's copper or silver or, or exactly you know what it's made of. But you're going to want a mesh that has some kind of a diagonal pattern. And depending on how big your holes are, it depends on how big your pattern will be. So you're going to lay this down, and you're going to come in with a brayer, and you're going to impress this mesh into the clay. Okay, make sure that that gets really down deep and you'll peel the mesh away. And when you do that, it's going to look like this. You can see it's got a little bit of a texture. Okay, now, this is the most important part right here. You're going to use your blade and you're going to bend your blade with your thumbs and you're going to slice. Let me take this away here. You're going to slice and reveal and take away the top portion. It may or may not work here because um, it's on paper and I really need it to grip. But you're going to take away the top portion of the clay. And you're going to do this in very, very thin sheets. Okay? So very thin slices. It's better to go over it again and again than to take one big, huge divot out of the clay. And I already have pieces over here to show you. So 
when you uh, get through with your pattern, like I have here, I can go back in and I can put my metal mesh over and I can re-imprint and continue to shave away the pieces. So I'll give you, I'm going to show you real quick here. Look at the detail in those pieces. Okay. Now, I'm going to set this to the side because I'm going to come in with a bead roller. And you don't necessarily have to have a bead roller, but this makes it really, really simple if you do. It's just a tool that has two pieces, a top and a bottom. And it has, this one here is a pro bead roller. And it has two different uh, sections here. They both make oval beads, but they make different sizes. And I've got a ball of, of a base clay. This could be scrap clay uh, that I put in one of the sections. So I'm just going to put the lid on it. And when I roll it back and forth, I create a base bead. Okay, makes it real easy. Now I'm going to come back. I'm going to bring my little shavings over here. So you get, and I use my blade to pick it up because sometimes it's really hard to pick up with your fingers. And I'm going to just overlay all of these pieces onto my bead like this. Very, very simple. Um, and it's also very random. So you can see that my shavings here are uh, real, you know, random. They're not perfect. They're not circle. They're not square. That's exactly what you want for this pattern. So you're going to go over the bead all the way around until you completely cover the bead. When you do, I'm going to show you my bracelet because this will give you the idea of all the different effects you can get. Okay, so the directions for finishing out and for poking the hole in your beads is in the book, but that gives you the basic idea of how to make rattlesnake beads.